Do you support Ron Paul? I mean, Ron Paul's a nice guy. I, <laughs> if I had to have dinner with one of the Republican candidates, I'd prefer to have it with him. But his policies are off the wall, you know. I mean, sometimes I agree with him, you know, like I think we ought to end the war in Afghanistan. But if you look at the other policies, I mean, it's kind of shocking. Uh, so, for, and, and the principles that lie behind them, you know, I, I don't know what to say about them. So, look, uh, you probably saw or maybe read in the Republican debates at one point, and this kind of brought out who he is. Yeah. He was asked, uh, he's against federal involvement in health, in anything. You know? right. He was asked uh, something like, uh, well, what about, what if some guy's in a coma and uh, uh, he's going to die and he never took out insurance? Uh, what should happen? Well, his first answer was something like, uh, it's a tribute to our liberty. Okay, so if he dies, that's a tribute to how free we are. Right. And he kind of backed off from that. Uh, actually, it was a huge applause when he said that. But after later reactions from elsewhere, he backed off and said, well, uh, the church will take care of them, or charities will take care of them, or something or other, so it's not a problem. Right. I mean, this is just savagery, yeah. and it goes across the board. In fact, this holds for the whole so-called libertarian ideology. I mean, you know, it may sound nice on the surface, but if you think it through, it's just a call for corporate tyranny. Yeah. It takes away any barrier to uh, corporate tyranny. It's a, a step towards the worst. But, right. but, we, but it's all academic. Because the business world would never permit it to happen, since it would destroy the economy. I mean, they can't live without a powerful nanny state. They know it. Frankly, I, I, there's a lot of feeling about that, but I really think it's misguided. I don't think the problem is printing fiat currency. That's, uh, I mean, just in a, mo I mean, if you eliminate capitalism, you know, okay, then there are other options. But in a, but uh, but that's but that's not on the agenda. We have a state capitalist economy. You know, maybe in the long term it can be worn away, maybe overthrown. I hope so. But the issue now is how do you function in a sensible state capitalist economy? And you cannot do that without a central bank that controls currency. In fact, if it wasn't for the Federal Reserve's ability to print money, we'd be in a deep depression right now, a worse depression than the 1930s. Uh, and what's, you know, since the sensible thing isn't being done for political reasons, the sensible thing would be creating demand by government investment. But for reasons that we can go into, that's not being done. Uh, in our state capitalist economy, the only alternative is the one that Bernanke has used. And if it wasn't for their option, we would be in a deep depression. Now, what's the de debt ceiling issue? Well, that's, uh, first of all, it should be recognized that the debt is not a serious problem. Certainly, the deficit is not a serious problem. Um, there are long-term problems about the debt, but they are so remote, they don't bear on policy. As far as the deficit is concerned, deficit is concerned, remember, that's not the same as the debt. Uh, uh, as Clinton left office, it's not that long ago, we had a surplus, no deficit. And it's not a deep structural problem. The current deficit is the result of Bush's tax cut, the crazy wars, uh, the virtually criminal behavior of the corporate system that led to the financial the housing crisis, finally financial crisis, uh, all of that has increased the deficit, but not out of sight. Uh, the deficit is, first of all, it's declining, and it's, uh, it, it would be overcome by actual growth. I mean, the, uh, the government uh, economic offices, Bureau of the Budget and so on, they calculate that there's about a trillion dollars of unused capacity. I mean, the real problem of the economy is not the debt and the deficit, it's the fact that the economy is so kind of grotesque that you have tens of millions of people wanting to work and not able to. You have huge financial resources. Uh, corporate, the corporations that don't know what to do with their money, huge profits, huge bank profits. There's an enormous amount that has to be done 
just walk around any city, you can think of a million things that have to be done and all kinds, you know, you just enumerate them at will. So a huge number of idle hands, enormous resources, tremendous amount of work that has to be done, and the economy is so dysfunctional it can't put them together. That's the problem. And it's destroying a generation of young people. It's uh, harming, severely harming the economy. Under current circumstances, the way out is pretty well known. It's to uh, stimulate the economy through government demand, since corporations aren't doing it, and to uh, devalue the dollar so that we import less and export more.